pour a glass of craft beer, we can do this. What's good, y'all? This is C-Certified Brewhead, and welcome to another edition, the second, actually, of Industry Talk here on BAOS. Something a little different this evening. So before we get down to business, we have a great beer that we're going to talk about, and this is very relevant. We have Ontario's Nickelbrook Funk Lab. This is their sour program, and this is uh, one I got from my boy Kyle Shasta, Kyle up in Ottawa, and this is uh, called Bastardized Apricots, and it's essentially an apricot sour stout, which I'm... Uh, Super amped about. I've had this sitting there for a little bit, so I'm pretty keen. So, before I also get down to uh, the topic at hand, uh, shout outs as always to Brewheads. Bam, look at that, yes. The openers, super fire. Hit the link in the description for the discount code. You definitely need that in your life. Shout outs to Pretty Penny as always. And something a little different. You might notice this top here that says, Get it in ya. Yeah, it does. Uh, Phil from Brewheads has been designing a new line of merch for us. So, uh, we've been wanting to get that out for a while. We're waiting on a couple last things uh, to get going. But we've done some, um, what do you call them? What do we call them? Prototypes. Done some prototypes. And uh, just to be wearing or just to wear them around to show you guys what we're working with right now. So this is the my personal favorite design, get it in you, like that. The uh, design here, the IPA glass, made so fire. Um, so let us know what you think. Is this the, this the type of stuff you want to, guys want to see? We're definitely focusing more on the actual like get it in your branding, which is kind of more fun to wear than just a logo on your tee. Um, I'll keep busting out more as the, the videos progress. So look at this uh, stout right here, mate. Looks kind of light at the top, which I quite enjoy. So I'm just going to do this review nice and quick and then uh, move on to the task at hand because it's uh, quite a... Uh, Sticky one, as the kids might say. There we go, a bit nickel broke there. All right, so it looks actually pretty dark, but doesn't seem so thick. I guess it's not, it's a sour stout. Interesting nose, very sour, roasty. Definitely getting the apricots. I dig it. Get in ya. I like being this close to the camera, it's much easier to see what's popping. Oh, nice. Yo, that's chill. Great sour stout, wow. Apricots are, are present, but not overly so. Roasty, and the roastiness really blends well with um, with a fruit like apricots, which you wouldn't really think it would. It's completely different, but yeah, this is great. Refreshing. It's like six seven or something, so it's not like super boozy. Six two even, so it's not very boozy. Nice and crushable. Super refreshing. It's a really uh, humid day today, so it's been all night now. Um, so this is going down a tree. All right. Let's get into it. So, uh, Ontario has a new program ran by the Premier Doug Ford uh, about buck a beer. So, for those who don't know what's up, I'm going to have a real quick background. I'm going to show you guys kind of what people have been saying as of right now. By the time this video comes out, it was a few days before we shot this. So, things might have even changed by the time we dropped this, but I'm trying to do it pretty quickly. So, essentially, buck a beer was a thing, I believe, you know, more than a decade ago. When I first was in Canada, there was buck a beer. People always made fun of uh, Lake and Lakeport, which was out in Hamilton. I believe it's the same facility that Collective Arts are in now. So, Doug Ford, who's the premier, he's the brother of Rob Ford, who was the uh, recently passed away, was the old mayor of Toronto. So, Doug Ford came in, and part of his campaign uh, platform was offering Buck a beer, bringing it back down. So, you know, that, that's something that he was basically leaning on to get the votes. So, what that was is that the pricing floor, the pricing floor on uh, beer was a dollar, or currently is a dollar twenty-five, and it hasn't been uh, any less than that for 10 years. So, he's reducing that down to a dollar, and they're trying to get that passed by August 27th in time for the uh, Labor Day weekend. So the idea behind it is that he's encouraging uh, breweries, and of which there are 260 breweries in Ontario, as you can imagine, the 90, whatever, 7, 98% are craft breweries. Um, and he's encouraging breweries to uh, do the buck a beer challenge and see if you can figure out how to do it, uh, to get you know your prices down to a buck a beer and sell it for that weekend. Um, as you can imagine, this has caused, excuse me, like a crazy amount of uh, conversation online, like more than I've seen in quite some time. He did mention it whenever the, it was months ago um, that it first came up, but he actually did a press release, uh, I believe it was today, hence why I want to talk about it today, August 27th, um, at 
uh, Barley Days Brewery in Prince Edward County, which is interesting. We'll come back to that. So basically that's what he's saying. And what, what he's encouraging people, uh, breweries to do is to drop the price and uh, in exchange for doing so, there's no tax subsidies, there's nothing on the taxpayers at all, but now breweries will get um, additional promotion from the LCBO, which is worth quite a bit of money um, for doing so, maybe some end displays and such. And, um, you know, and I guess it's just additional promotion for doing that. And then, of course, you know, the idea would be you get more customers because you're dropping the price of your product. So that's the general thing. There's no, it's voluntarily as well, completely voluntary. Um, okay, so that's basically what it is. So now I was, uh, I was on Twitter. And I'm looking at the general feeling. I follow a whole different, you know, bunch of people from drinkers to employees of breweries and writers and podcasters and YouTubers and stuff. Uh, as you can imagine, a lot of the follow people I follow around Ontario, and there's a whole lot of conversation. So this one tweet went viral by this guy, Tyler Turek, who says, I work for an Ontario craft beer company. Yes, I'll sell you a dollar beer, but it'll be in a two ounce glass because I understand the good beer costs money to pro- cost good money to produce. So that, at, at the time I screenshotted it early today, it had like 1,300 retweets and over 6,000 likes. So that's significant for something in craft beer. So it really shows you where people's mindset is. So there's a statement from our good friends at Nickelbrook right here. And they said, Nickelbrook would not take part in the proposed bucket beer plan. We've always been about quality and don't aim to change that now or ever. We have no intention in joining a race to the bottom. Keywords. Uh, we stand with our fellow craft brewers in opposing this gimmick by Ford. So... That was one of the first ones I saw. Uh, Merit did a whole thread on it. Now, I won't read the whole thread, um, but it started like, hey, at Ford Nation, want to provide a subsidy to breweries in Ontario? Here are a few ideas to better things, of better things to subsidize than $1 beer. So basically they're saying, suggests actual uh, actionable things that people that the government can do instead of subsidizing or at least pushing brewers to make a dollar beer. You know, they're saying you can make a brewer's healthcare plan that covers uh, all people in the brewing industry, subsidize tuition or scholarships at the Niagara College, uh, diversity training for breweries, shout out to Ren, um, work placement ops for marginalized populations, uh, mandatory workplace harassment training, uh, subsidies that in, uh, incentivize hiring local artists as well to for design work. Um, you know, using LCBO's lab uh, to provide free quality assurance for breweries. And then Fairweather responded, or just let us operate in a free market and we'll be able to do all of these things with no subsidies required, which I thought was an interesting thing because that was something we've been wanting to talk about for a while actually is the, the Canadian beer laws that are extraordinarily archaic and very, very restrictive. So it seems pretty clear that the breweries aren't into it so far. There's also Troy Birch, shouts to Troy from Great Lakes, uh, the great uh, Toronto brewery, um, basically as well said that they will not be doing it and he was interviewed by CBC. Um, And uh, basically he was saying that, and he actually gave some uh, physical prices. So they did an analysis on their Canuck Pale Ale, which is their biggest seller, their their flagship beer one would say. Uh, They currently sell it for $2.80. Now if they dropped it to a buck of beer, there would be... um, uh, with the taxes deposit basic price adjustments it would literally be selling it to them for 13 cents so basically they wouldn't be able to employ this so they employ 50 people and they do a bunch of community initiatives charity things and they wouldn't be able to sustain themselves as a business it's just not possible uh, in craft beer a lot of the time to, to to be able to do that just the ingredients are so expensive um, and it's just not feasible. And as, as the quality of, of the beer has grown over the years, so has the price because the ingredients come from further. I mean, they're getting hops from Australia and across the continent in uh, northwest U.S. mostly like because a lot of those hops are um, patented. So they can't just go and grow Galaxy next door. They have to import it from Australia, and they're hard to get. Nelson Sylvain is like the hardest to get and most expensive hop in the world, and that's from New Zealand. And that's, uh, you know... They, there's no other way to get it. You have to do that. So the price of, of beer ingredients is it's just increasing. So therefore, it's just not feasible to make bucket beer. Even uh, apparently people were saying a lot of the macro brewers are going to be just ignoring it and not doing it either. Um, so Bali Days, because they did the press conference there, which uh, is a brewery in Prince Edward County. Um, from what I just saw, I was like, I was saying to Tiff before, I was like, oh, I couldn't really find any proof. People were mad at Bali Days, I saw, but... And they said, because they were opting in. But I couldn't find any proof of that. There was no tweet or Facebook post or anything from them. Uh, There was no article that I saw. But then I went to their Facebook page and I'm looking at some of the reviews and people are saying, great beer, questionable ethics. Mediocre beer, horrible politics. 
I was a loyal customer, not anymore. Um, at the same token, there was someone who said, I will go out of my way to support you because of the support you gave Premier Ford. Then they said, and this kind of, I don't want to go too deep into this, but he ended it with make Ontario great again. So we kind of know the type of people that Rob Ford are attracting here. Um, and, uh, you know, so it's a little unfortunate because I, you know, was always a fan of Bali Days. I thought their stuff was pretty decent because my friend Brett was working there. Um, so on the flip side, uh, there was this dude, Chris Chapin, on uh, Twitter. And I think he was just like, I don't know if he's an actual politician, but, um, or at least he was in like one of the parties. Uh, he did this long thread. I'm just going to summarize it, uh, based on what he's saying. But he was trying to suggest that there's a, a, a huge divide between the elite and the, he called them the folks, just meaning normal working class people. Um, and he's sort of saying, he's making fun of, uh, of craft beer. Like, maybe you laugh at Bucket Beer, maybe you sneer. Uh, but uh, Maybe you roll your eyes, but, my, but guess what? This isn't about you or your triple reverse osmosis cold brew cannabis infused IPA. So you already know that this dude's got a problem with craft beer because whenever people start saying shit like that, that's when you know they're dickheads and they don't understand what's going on. He was a former digital director for the PC party. Oh, that's right. Okay, so Ford, sorry, Doug's, Doug's Doug party. Ford's party, right? Yeah. Okay, that's, there you go. Um, so that explains why he's talking like he's talking. He's saying without costing taxpayers a dime, like Doug Ford just saved folks a bunch of bucks. And uh, he's saying nine dollars a two four is what the price floor is going to be. I guess he's bringing down twenty five cents a thing down at twenty four beers or whatever. That's what that's what he's saying. Um, and he's saying he's giving me doing math. What does nine bucks a two four really mean? Uh, if you bought a two four every two weeks, two hundred fifty dollars a year. A case a week, five hundred a year, so on and so forth. Um, he's like, of course you snide. Who drinks buck of beer? Uh, and this is the key tweet. But you know exactly who does. You just look down on them. Your friend who works in a factory. Your cousin who's an electrician. Probably that guy you know who didn't finish high school. So basically what he's saying, and then I wrote a lot of the uh, responses to this. And people are like, well, I'm a, like the, my cousin and my, and my husband are both electricians and they own way more than me. What are you trying to say? Or the dude was like, I didn't finish high school. Like, you, what, what does that mean? Am I going to have good taste in beer because I didn't finish high school? So he is now unwittingly making assumptions about his own con- like voting base, which is just fucking ridiculous. He's stereotyping. He's very much stereotyping. Essentially, that's what it is. And the, uh, a final funny thing, uh, Doug Ford's actual picture was from Bandit Brewery. And Bandit responded, hi there, the image being used here is our brewery. We did not authorize it. Could you please remove it right away? I love that so much. Uh, that made me laugh a lot. Um, so essentially, yeah, uh, it's, it's a very interesting thing. It's implicated craft beer in a way that, you know, they know nobody in this industry, none of the brewers asked for this. Um, no one wants to be associated with these people for the most part. Uh, it seemed to, you know, very much, un, you know, trying to encourage people like the brewers to undercut themselves just to appease this. And, you know, so that, that's at least my take on it. That's from what I could see. I did a lot of reading today and a lot of, uh, you know, reading a bunch of conversations kind of on both sides. Uh, there were some comments for both, to be honest. Most of them were in the support of, uh, I guess, against the bucket beer thing. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see how it pans out. A lot of people are getting really passionately involved in this. And I it's, it's feel like it's almost like, not almost, like it's brought together the community in, again in another way. Because everyone's pretty aligned on it. And um, yeah, I don't really understand why you would want to participate in the race to the bottom. I think that's the best way to summarize it. It doesn't make a lot of sense. Uh, there's, you know, all it's going to do is put people out of business. Um, and, and also Troy even said from uh, Great Lakes that it cost them seven Gs. Uh, plus for those LCBO um, uh, promotions and stuff like that. So they, um, you know, they, now they're just giving that away for them to lose money on one side and then say, hey, well, it saves you seven grand or whatever. Like it's, it, none of it really makes a lot of sense. So I'd love to hear what you guys think. Um, comment below, let us know, uh, did, I, did I miss something here? Um, is there any other elements I'm not aware of? Once again, it's Tuesday. This video is going to go up on Friday. So, you know, in these next couple of days, there might be more developments, but I just want to record it now because this happened today and there was quite a lot of activity. All right, y'all. So, as expected, a bunch of stuff had happened since I shot the video. Today is Friday. The video is going up shortly. Uh, I shot the video on Tuesday. So, the main few things that happened, other breweries had come out uh, in, I guess, the, against the... Buck of beer uh, scheme, uh, most notably Sawdust City had a big one, um, Bose definitely did, uh, a whole bunch of breweries were sort of like not even bothering to uh, go into the specifics anymore because so many other breweries had sort of said it so succinctly and they just didn't even need to. Uh, the most notable one, well there's two things that are notable that happened, one where um, Bali Days actually came out in support 
uh, really publicly, but uh, of the Buckabeer uh, challenge, they hadn't actually released anything before then, aside from sort of uh, assumed support based on the fact that the press conference was at their brewery. They've released a beer called Loon Lager, which should come out just before Labor Day. For a dollar a beer, they have not confirmed whether that's going to include tax or deposit or anything like that. Uh, they're doing free tastings at their brewery all weekend, I saw. So, out of curiosity, I, I'm going to try and get one next time I'm in Toronto and see if it's possible to see what's going on there. Hi, Tiff. Hey. Uh, and uh, secondly, Dominion City did potentially the best response where they called, they did a blonde ale called Buckabeer and in brackets it said a Buckabeer for, an, I believe it's Ottawa refugees or immigrants to the area, which was genius. They received so much support publicly, it was unbelievable. Um, extraordinarily impressive. I've been retweeting everything from the BOS uh, Twitter feed, at BOS Podcast, so if you want to go see some of these things for yourself, what the breweries are saying, check that out. That was it, guys. Let's get back to the video. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how it pans out, like I said. So, really love to hear what you guys think. Um, you know, I know it's a bit of a touchy subject. We really don't like talking politics that much here, but this is a pretty clean-cut situation, I think. Um, as far as you know what they're trying to do and they're essentially dividing the people when they're trying to say they're bringing them back together So uh, let us know what you guys think. Thank you again for watching if you enjoyed the video mate Smash the thumbs up hit subscribe below blah blah and uh, hit that notification bell So you know when the new new is dropping follow us on social media at BOS podcast and check out the long-form audio uh, Apple podcast Spotify our two faves uh, hit follow uh, subscribe review rate all of that good stuff check it out lots and lots and lots of good content coming up uh, in the next few months I always say that but like we've got some uh, fire fire trips set up so we're going to be hitting the states a bit and doing some great content out there um, that is it guys thanks again we'll see you in the next video and as always get in ya.